I'm an associate professor in the Department of Philosophy at St. Mary's, and I'm also now one of the co-directors of the new first year experience with the, as St. Mary's begins to roll out its new core this year. Um, so the way that a lot of people would define something like subjective moral relativism is that something is moral if and only if um, the subject herself believes it. So if you hold to or committed to a position, then you know that whatever that is, that's moral for you. Most of us don't think that model has any merit to it because yeah. it has heaps and heaps of problems. Um, you know, the biggest one might be something along the lines of that morality is something where we're bound with regard to our actions and attitudes towards other people. So, you know, right there, that my personal belief or personal judgment has no check against other people would be would be one of those big flaws of that kind of way of thinking about what it would mean to be moral. This is a big movement that's happening, the relativism, you know, just everyone has their own morality. You can believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. And so if we continue going in this path, what are the things that we can start seeing in our society that can start causing conflict? I don't know if moral relativism itself would cause conflicts because it's just a belief about what is good or good or not or permissible or not or obligatory or not. Um, so the causal language is, might be just a little strong, but if what I would say is that a lot of conflict where people refuse to engage, um, refuse to talk to one another, or refuse to be tolerant of some of the legitimate differences, and I think there's quite a bit of room there, morally speaking, uh, for a lot of differences. You know, those are cases where relativism is going to sort of incline a subject if they're, if they're inclined towards it to retreat into some kind of sort of self-serving attitude where, you know, they, they feel like entitled that they can do what they want with their people or to other people, or they don't have to care about other people. You know, whatever you're going to be inclined to do is not necessarily going to have to take into account the harms you may be contributing to other people or the risks of harms that you're exposing them to. Is it permissible to drink, to drink and drive? You know, most of people would say no, especially at whatever level it means to be intoxicated. If I think, oh, no, it's cool, then I might be inclined or, or less worried about the potential consequences or harms I might expose other people to. So even if you get away with it, right, I, I you know, did fine this one time, you know, that's, that's inconsequential to whether what we did was morally permissible or not. Um, because again, it's, it's not just the actual harms that we, we contribute to other people, but the potential risk of harm. And as we do things like get intoxicated and try to drive or operate heavy machinery, we're going to increase the level of risk we're exposing others to. That would create the problem of, well, then people could just drive drunk and there's there's going to be consequences, but they don't need to be held uh, liable, I guess, for those consequences if they believe in that, I guess. Well, that would be their argument, right? If, if that's what they believe. Now, somebody else could believe that it's wrong, but it would be only morally binding on the individual, right? Your judgment would only cover you instead of the idea that maybe what we were aiming for if we want to be good moral agents is to have our judgments align with whatever is true broadly speaking however we want to kind of cash that out things like you know taking your medicine or something like this is you may not like the taste of the medicine going down it's unpleasant but you know the payoff of being restored to health is is better than you know, that slight discomfort, if, again, we want to call that a harm. Now, some people would argue that's not really a harm, but that gets into exactly what's difficult about it or what needs to be disfigured is what constitutes a harm. So what are some other uh, philosophical issues with uh, moral relativistic thinking? There's a good number of issues that that particular framework faces, um, you know, things that really kind of bury it in, in quite a deficit. So one is, is what we might say is an issue of um, moral progress or the lack thereof. So if morality really is subjective, meaning just by, you know, whatever I believe at a given point in time is what's morally binding to me and no one else and and whatever you believe and vice versa. Well, then, you know, if I change my mind, I haven't made progress, morally speaking. I've just altered the moral universe. What that would mean is if these types of approaches to thinking about how we might define what is or is not moral are correct, then Someone like Martin Luther King Jr., who today is hailed pretty universally as, you know, a really good example of a moral reformer who helps initiate a significant moral progress. A lot of us think the civil rights movement made a lot of progress, for example. If relativism is true, then King is not a good person, or he was not. You know, if you look at the, his approval ratings before his assassination, 
he, as his family will point out, when people try to celebrate him in certain ways today, um, without, without sort of forgetting what he was up to, <laughs> like you can't have your cake and eat it too. He was very significantly, you know, by a, a substantial majority of people in the United States, disliked. Now, if we think we've made progress on those issues, you know, even if it's an imperfect progress, but we've made, we think it's even capable of making progress, and we think that someone like King did good, then you know, relativism is not going to help us figure that out because relativism is say he, he is bad. You might think he's good, but you know, your view now is you know binding again only to you, and your judgment is limited then to you. It's it's like saying I, I like this or that. Uh, this is, it yeah. sort of reduces moral claims to I like this or I like that, which is not what moral claims seem to be about. You know, ideas from past you know philosophers or people who have created moral structures that doesn't move the the ball forward in that sense of figuring out what is good and what is bad. General problem underlying it that isn't just unique to moral relativism is as we change the yardstick, so to speak, what we're measuring, we can't measure with with one thing, A, and then say, no, now we're going to measure with B and say that there's progress, right? Because if we've changed from A to B as our unit of measure, whatever that is, we're not measuring the same thing anymore. And so, you know, maybe, you know, moral progress is not about stable values. Maybe moral progress is, is more subtle and refined to the extent that it might be possible. Or maybe it's, it's you know, really complicated. I remember looking at the psychological, like a book I had to read in psychology, and it said something like there are, there are statistics that show there's some universal moral beliefs across cultures. So there are pretty consistent cross-cultural um, values, what we, we might say. So it's not necessarily that the the specific moral judgment is always the same. You know, this thing is good or this thing is bad. Now, natural law's problem is it's not clear what we mean by natural in this case. The other thing natural law tends to do that can get a little tricky for that particular framework. And some alternatives could be you could value pleasures and pains. That's kind of how usually utilitarians go about it. You could value sort of the goodness of a particular action as it's justifiable according to reason, which is the way that deontologists might go about it. You could value character, which is the way the virtue theorists go about it. Or you could value like caring relationships. Yeah, you know, and that makes me wonder if you go on like another island or a planet or whatever, um, morality starts over. So how do you explain that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's tricky, right? I mean, it's, there's one intuition that's right, clearly, I think, is um, that, you know, context and circumstance matters to some extent. But where I think a lot of us slip or what hasn't trickled down through is, is that we can... Have-